We know that uh, God speaks through history, through what happens. That's what this is, is saying. So it means that God is speaking in your life through what happens. But again, without that interiority, if we haven't woken that up for people, they cannot reflect on their lives. They're lost and they won't hear the call. They've got to somehow engage um, with their life experience. So anything that you do as a chaplain that helps them to reflect on their life experiences makes them more uh, literate about talking about what goes on and how they experience it is going to help them to hear the call to love. And it's, it's as, in some ways it's as simple as that, but I think it needs um, a kind of chaplaincy structure that allows that sharing to happen. And when I say chaplaincy, I mean chaplaincy, not chaplains. Chaplaincy is bigger than chaplains. When a teacher at the end of a class puts his books down or her books down and says to a child, I want to chat with you for a minute, and all the rest of the class goes out, that teacher can possibly become a chaplain. And that work that they're going to do, that conversation that they're going to have, is part of chaplaincy for the whole school. And I think we get it wrong if we try and just make the chaplain a little individual bubble in the school. Apart from the fact that it makes you very lonely, um, that, that all of the teachers who are moved, who've been called to education, called as a vocation, are also called to awaken love in the lives of young people. So when that teacher stops and says, I see that your, your shirt is dirty and your shoes have got holes in them and you looked a bit sad when you came into class. There's love in action, perhaps awakening in that young person um, a sense of being loved that they're not getting somewhere else. And that protects them. You know the story. Have you heard the story of uh, um, Harry Potter? Harry, po Harry Potter is he's lying in bed after having battled with he who should not be named, uh, etc. And Dumbledore comes in and says, are you okay? Uh, and Harry Potter says, I don't see why he didn't kill me. And Dumbledore said, it's because you've got a mark on you. And Harry Potter goes up to this, got this zigzag mark on it. He said, he said no, it's not that mark. There's a mark which is much deeper, and that comes from the fact that you were loved by your parents, and that protects you from this evil. So any time that we can awaken that sense of being loved in a young person, we are protecting them, guarding their dignity, not just now, but in the future, because when they meet somebody else or meet a situation, that same dynamic of love is recognized and they start that interior journey into the love of God. So it's, uh, it's quite mysterious. I hope you're happy with mystery because there's plenty around. Okay, I want to give you a, a, a definition of vocation now. And this definition of vocation does not mention the word God. Is that possible? It's possible, because you'll see it in a minute. <laughs> whether, it's, uh, whether it's right or not, here it is. This is a theologian from the USA. Vocation is the place where our deepest gladness meets the world's deepest need. He's written it a number of times. Um, that was the quote that I found. But God calls in my deepest gladness and he calls me to respond to my world's deep need. Okay? Is that all right? Okay. 
let me tell you the story then. Uh, this is my story, uh, briefly. Um, I went to, so I, I went to um, about eight schools before I was 16. So I, I did a lot of moving about um, because of my dad's work. So I was on the move all the time. Um, my mum hated it, my dad loved it. There was a certain amount of tension in the family, it wasn't always the happiest family, but we moved and we stuck together. And then when I was about nine, there was an accident and one of my brothers died in a road accident. He was six, I witnessed it as a nine-year-old nine um, and that blew my mind. Uh, and for four or five years, I think I was just emotionally dead, I, I, I would have thought. Um, but in that nine-year-old, I had questions. What has happened? Why did this have to happen? Where is my brother Chris? I had to have answers to those. And there were deep questions that are chewing around inside me. Now, wherever I went with my family, within days sometimes, we were part of a parish community in a, in a strange town. I was on the altar serving, making friends. I was in the scouts and so on. This was an amazing experience. And I thought, well, maybe we got lucky. But if once you've moved eight times and it's the same in every place, you think, my God, this is great. So when I got to uh, year 11 and I had, uh, you know, it was the Beatles, so it's a while ago, you know. Um, Sergeant Peppers when I was in year 11 and things like that. Um, and all my mates were saying, oh, the church is finished, get out. Why do you want to think about the church? And I thought to them, I said to them, it's the best thing. It's the most consistent, supportive presence that I've ever come across. And I want to give my life to that. And that's my calling came through that experience of loss and disruption because I was listening for something. I was searching for meaning. And I found it in the experience of joining a cub pack and then joining a scouts, uh, going on trips, pilgrimages and so on, serving on the altar. I felt I found a place to belong where I was loved and accepted time after time after time. That gave me such confidence that I, I, I was doing the right thing to think about priesthood. The other thing that was happening is that I knew, because my family were basically falling apart, how unhappy I was in, in the home, how grief-struck I was over my brother, and how young people can often be totally overlooked, you know, and abandoned, even when they're in a family. So that was the other thread of this call, that young people in need really pulled here. And I thought, there's nothing better I can do with my life than to reach out to those young people and try and help them answer the question of meaning and reassure them and get them on their journey. So church and young people, Salesian. They come together. So my call was eventually quite clear, but it came through lived experience. It did not come through some sort of um, divine revelation. 